really perfect soap dough. And, uh, and it, it's not to pat myself on the back by any stretch. It's The reason I'm saying this is because this is what I strive for. This is a little bit, this has a little bit more cornstarch in it right now and I've been working on it uh, quite a bit. But um, it'll start to, if you put too much cornstarch in it, if you can see, it'll start to dry and get cracked. And I don't want that. So this is much more ideal right here. It's a little softer. And it doesn't, that crack isn't, it's not lack of moisture. It's just the way it, it's moving. But it doesn't stick. See? And I have been working my tail feathers off. And I have, in the molds right now, I have gold, blue, green, and a really amazing pink. They're all amazing colors because I use Nurture Soap Supply Micas. But, um, the, the, and the gold, I just did a video of the oil yesterday because it was so beautiful. But the pink is really, really pink. So I'm excited about that. Um, I have to always test the texture of it to make sure that it's what I want to offer. So as soon as I test that today, I should be able to make those available this afternoon. I also have um, 50 bars of white like this. So you can use this. White is a great base for anything. And then paint mica on top of it. Um, and I have uh, black and red and yellow so my primaries are covered and then we'll have all those and then once everybody gets their soap dough i'll start that process all over again which is perfectly fine okay so i wanted to show you what a good soap dough looks like because a lot of people are making soap dough and they don't understand that they're making it but what they're producing it doesn't it doesn't the texture is incorrect and they can do that i mean absolutely anybody can do what they want but i'm i just want to show you what an example of a good soap so you know what you're looking for and like i said why would i want you to be successful when i could just you know offer my soap dough and that's because i want our community to grow not just soap in general i love that idea but soap dough. And I want other people to put their minds to this art form. And it's not like it's gonna change the world by any stretch, but I find it incredibly enjoyable to be around people that um, find delight in soap dough creations. And the, here's the part, like the part that's most intriguing to me is when I show somebody that here's handmade soap and it looks like this, that they're always excited. Like without a doubt, it gets their interest. I don't even know why, don't care, but it's fun and that doesn't go away for me. So that's why I keep doing it. Cause if I wasn't interested in it, I certainly wouldn't keep doing it. I have. A ton of other things that I like to do that don't cause me as much work. <laughs> uh, taking pictures, for example, I could take my camera out into the desert. I have I feed lovebirds um, right outside my window, and I haven't been taking pictures of those guys. Although I keep feeding them, they're pretty awesome. They're little characters. There's like a humongous flock out here on the old golf course. And you can hear them yelling at each other. And um, they're, they're just little characters. And they're interested in me, which I think is funny because I'll click to them or whistle to them. And they're interested in coming by me, but um, they won't come near, which I find really funny. But they're curious, like you can see them because they fly close and they cock their head and they look around. And I'm not really sure, you know, I don't know how birds think, but I'm not really sure um, what is going on with them or why they'd be curious. Like, do they remember? Do they tell each other that I feed them? I mean, other people feed them, which I find funny, but I'll tell you a story. 
So I, when I lived at this apartment complex a couple years ago, I lived near this big golf course, really nice golf course. I still live near it, I'm just not right next to it. Anyway, I would walk there every day and I'd take some, some seed with me and feed the ducks because there's just like a gob of ducks. There's a flock of them over there and they were having babies. And so I thought, well, I'll just feed them a little bit. Well, one day I was out there and I saw one of the babies had a fishing hook in it. I could see the string on it. And of course, I panicked. I mean, immediately. Well, I didn't panic. Okay, let me be clear. I got a big dose of adrenaline. So I knew what needed to happen. I needed to catch that bird and get that fishing hook out of it or it will not survive. And and it wasn't like, I just got the adrenaline dump and then I just started working it out in my mind how I was going to get this bird. And Oddly enough, well, there was a very long fishing line to it and I caught the fishing line and the bird was so little that it, 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 was, it happened quick. So I grabbed the fishing line, grabbed the baby bird and picked him up and I could see that this was buried, this little fishing hook was buried in it. And by now, the rest of the, the ducks were up in arms and they were very upset that I had taken this bird. They didn't understand that I was trying to help it. And so they were coming at me and I saw this guy on the, on the golf course walking, an old guy, never spoke to me. I don't think that we spoke the same language. And, but he kind of nodded to me, generally speaking, when I saw him and I nodded to him. He didn't even smile at me. He just nodded to me. And so, but I, I didn't know what else to do. And of course this is happening so quickly that I ran up to the top of the hill with this baby bird in my arms. The birds, the ducks are flying at me. And I get up there and so this guy and I don't speak the same language, but I showed him what I was up to. And I asked him if he could help me. And I said, do you have a knife or something? I don't even know why I asked that. And um, he pulled a knife out of his pocket, a little pocket knife. And I showed him where the, the fish hook was in the baby and he gave it a little slit and I pulled the fish hook out no problem left it by the tree so I could come and retrieve it and took the baby bird and he didn't bleed a ton but he had been bleeding more from me who I had poked my finger because I couldn't get the fishing hook out and I had blood all over him anyway so I ran him back to his mother and his mother came and took him and and they were just like you know the whole flock was like disturbed by the whole thing and I didn't think much about it after that so the season comes and goes and all of a sudden, so I live in an apartment complex with like two, I don't know, two or 400 built or apartments. I don't even remember now, but it was a pretty big complex and we were deep in the complex. We weren't right on the edge. And I walk outside one day and there's um, a female and a male duck on my doorstep. Not even kidding. They had figured out who I was and found me in that entire complex. And so I gave them some seed out of my doorstep. But I only did it a couple times because I lived on the street and I didn't want them to get hit. But at one point, I'd go to the golf course and I would have 30 or 40 ducks follow me around as I walked around the golf course. No joke. And... Um, People were calling me the duck lady. Anyway, there you go. Um, that's the mold. And I'm doing, I'm going to do better making videos. This isn't a very good video. I'm just practicing and um, trying to piece it all together. So I have another project I'm working on and I'm making, I want to show you how I make an entire soap from the concept to the embellishments to making the soap um, and then cutting it and cleaning it up too. So I clean every soap. I am very detailed when it comes to the soap because I want it to be as, as, as uh, presentable as possible when you get your soap or whoever sees it. So I made these with this and I'm going to um, paint these a bit but these are soap samples and I thought I love the mold so I thought I would make that it looks like oh wait tell me who you think this is in the comments below so 
that's a really shallow mold and this one's much more difficult to do but I'll show you how this works and the reason it's difficult is because this is bendy in a mold like this I would think like this one's perfect because of all the details you want to be able to open it up so that it pops out but in a mold like this um, a firmer mold I think would be ideal for this um, but I'm at the whim of the mold makers <laughs> and the uniqueness. I'll put a link down to these, maybe. Well, I won't just yet because I, let me work with these a while. I, it takes me a while to, like I just started working with this company and I, I, don't, I don't know them just yet, so. So. smallest little fuzz white is great for letting you see where if you because you can it's not it's not always like I don't work in a clean not a clean like a I mean clean as in computer clean like in clean environments and computer clean it's like they have air purifiers and you suit up and you go in and it's dust free I work in a very clean environment but as far as dust goes I work in just a normal environment like everybody else and so I have furnace and air conditioning and all that, and just air, just dust in the air will float around, and you are, I would, I am really surprised. Okay, let's just put it that way. I'm really surprised at how much dust is in the air, and I and little, like little things I can see because this my environment's always like as clean as I can make it, you know? I mean, I spray with alcohol and I wipe everything down and I do it a couple different times and I use paper towels and I use this, that, and the other. See, and this, my point in saying all this is that when you use white soap dough, you can see all the little fibers that float around in the air. They just float around in the air and that you can pick them up. So if you really want to make something clean, roll a big piece of soap dough out on your worktop before you start doing your soap because it'll pick up every single thing on your, your desktop or on your workstation, your worktop. Okay. There. So, how do we deal with the edges? No problem. I don't have an oval one and I would like to get an oval one, but you know what? I have like a bazillion cutters I'm like, do I really want to over one for this one? I try not to have too much stuff, which is, that's part of how I got into soap molding because I just didn't want a bunch of molds.